PBS TV for grade one math for the week of June 8th through June 12th. This is for lesson one. Here are our outcomes for today. We are going to make sense of problems by using the three reads strategy. In order to solve real world problems involving addition, subtraction, and comparing numbers. Today, we will be using a three read strategy to help us understand story problems in math. In step one, we will read to make sense of the problem. In step two, we'll read for details. In step three, we will read to represent the problem. So step four, we'll solve the problem. And then in step five, we'll check our work. You may use this organizer to help you through each step. In the first step, we're going to read the problem to make sense of it. That means that we're going to read the whole problem to find out what it is about. We'll ask ourselves, what's happening in the problem? What action is taking place? We'll think about how we can describe the problem in our own words. And we'll also think about what questions we have that we're not sure about yet. Here's our problem. How many students competed in the spelling bee? And then there's a table with five teachers and the number of students in their class who competed in the spelling bee. So now that we've read the problem, let's tell what happened in our own words. This is a problem about an elementary school who's having a spelling bee. There are five first grade classes. And in those five classes, each teacher had some students who competed in the spelling bee. I'm gonna draw a quick sketch just so that I can remember what the problem is about. So I'm gonna draw my five teachers. And they're all at school and they have students who are competing in the spelling bee. I wonder if there's gonna be a trophy for the winner or maybe a medal. In step two, we're gonna read the problem again and this time we're gonna read for details. That means we're gonna think about what the numbers in the problem represent. We'll also think about what problem structure or type it is. We'll look at vocabulary charts, charts and graphs for information. We'll put a star by parts of the text that we understand. And we'll think about what information is needed to solve the problem. And we'll also put a question mark next to any of the text that we need more information about to understand. So let's read again. How many students competed in the spelling bee? And let's take a look at the numbers in the problem this time. Each class has a different number of students. Those numbers are really important to the problem. And it makes sense to me that they're all around 20, 21, up until 24, because I know from going to school that most first grade classes have between 20 and 25 kids. So these numbers make sense to me. Let's also think about what information we need to know. If we're going to figure out how many students competed, we're going to have to know all of those numbers and count all of the students together. That makes me think that this might be an addition problem. And it's also important to remember that in our chart, we have five different groups that when we count them, we'll have to make sure we count all five groups. And one more thing that I'm not really sure about, since there were students competing in the spelling bee, I'm still wondering if there would be a winner or maybe a second or third place winner. I don't know if that information is important to solving the problem, but it's something that I'm still wondering about. Now that we've read the problem a second time, Let's think about those details. 
I know that there were five teachers and each teacher has a different number of students competing in the spelling bee. Ms. Price had 22 students. Ms. Walker had 23. Ms. Dixon had 21. Ms. Prescott had 20. And Ms. Gibson had 24 students. And we're thinking that we're going to have to count all of those groups of students together. Now we're going to read through the problem one more time, and this time we'll be thinking about how we can represent the information in the problem. We'll use the information from the problem to represent it with a drawing. We'll think about what operations we will use to solve the problem. We should also start thinking about what we know about that operation. So what properties or problem types or strategies do we start using when we use that operation? And we'll make sure that we label the information that we know. Let's read our third time. How many students competed in the spelling bee? So from reading the problem a third time, we have to decide how we want to represent this problem to make it easy for us to solve it. So one thing that I think will be helpful is if we decompose all of our numbers into tens and ones. So 22 is 20 and 2. 23 is 20 and 3. 21 is 20 and 1. 20, well, that's just 20 and no ones. And 24 is 20 and 4. We decided that since we need to count all of the students, that would be an addition problem. So we're going to add all of those groups together. So we can add our tens and then our ones separately. It might also help us, since we have a lot of adding to do, to represent our numbers or our quantities by using drawings of place value blocks. So to draw 22, I would draw two tens and two ones. To draw 23, I need two tens and three ones. To draw 21, I need two tens and one one. To draw 20, I just need two tens. And to draw 24, I need two tens and four ones. When we go to solve our problem, it will be really helpful that we drew out the, this picture and wrote an equation. So far, we have read the problem to understand what it is about. Then we reread the problem to understand the quantities and action in the problem. Finally, we read the problem a third time to decide how we could use math to solve the problem. So now that I've done a lot of the hard work in setting it up, it's time to solve. When we solve a math problem, it's important to be accurate and precise. We want to make sure that we follow the directions and solve all parts of the problem. We want to make sure we show our thinking with an equation, explanation, or justification. And we want to make sure that we use correct math vocabulary, symbols, and numbers. Let's go back to our representation. I can use my decomposed atoms to easily add tens and ones. We also wrote our equation. When we solve the problem, we will answer the question, how many students competed in the spelling bee? Now it's time to solve by adding the tens and the ones. Let's count the tens first. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 
there are 10 groups of 10, which is 100. Now we just have to count the ones. Two plus three is five. Five plus one is six. And six plus four is 10. So 100 plus 10 equals 110. So that means that between all five classes, 110 first graders competed in the spelling bee. Now it's time to check our work. We'll reread the problem and our answer and we'll think about if we used all the information from the problem to find the answer to the problem. And then we'll make sure that our answer makes sense. We wanna make sure that we answered all parts of the problem, how many students competed in the spelling bee. To go back and check my work, I like to make sure that I use another strategy or estimation to determine if my answer is reasonable or that it makes sense. So one thing that I can think of is if I just count the tens, that's easy for me to skip count. Each class had two tens, which is 20. So that means that we have five groups of 20 and then some more because of the ones. When I add five groups of 20, that's 100, because we count 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So just from counting the tens, our answer would be 100. But we know that each number also had some ones. So since our answer was more than 100, we know that we're probably correct because our answer is reasonable. That means it makes sense using estimation. Now it's time for you to practice on your own. Log into Schoology to see the assignment from your teacher. Make sure you ask your teacher if you have questions and don't forget to submit your work. Thanks for tuning in to BCPS TV. Well, boys and girls, that's it from us for this week. And on behalf of your friends here at BCPS Math, we want you to know that you are so loved, that you are so important, and that you hold the future in your hands. So stay safe, be kind, and do the math.